right, so this week's video, again, no set structure, just a few things to touch on. Um, this week I wanted to talk about buckings and barrels, um, what I use, why I use what I use, um, and some, some good combinations out there, whether that's for AEG barrels, things like the SRS uh, and the APS-2 rifles, like the L96, um, or whether it was your standard VSR buckings uh, and, and GBB buckings. And now we've got a few people in. Uh, sorry, someone just sent me a message. Um, now I've got a few people in, I'll, I'll sort of show you what I've got here and I'll, I'll go through them one by one. So firstly, I've got a load of different nubs out of my spare box, spares box even. Um, so let's have a look at those. Uh, so, uh, rather than looking at my face as well, I'm hoping that I can get these into focus for you. I don't know how how good that looks, whether my camera's going to topple over. Is that alright for you guys? So, we'll start with your standard standard AEG sort of bucking. So this is uh, an SHH, SHS bucking, which I got from AK24. Um, standard silicon bucking, you can see, or I hope you can see, it's got just the single mound design on there. Uh, feed lips are quite tight on these, which is can be a problem on AEGs uh, with feeding, but on rifles that use these buckings like the SRS, having tight feed lips is good because it really helps with the seal. Um, I generally stick to 60 degree buckings, whether that's in an AEG or, or the bolt actions, um, just because I find it gives a good balance between uh, how durable it is, but also how, how grippy it is, how well it holds the BB. With these sort of standard buckings, um, you generally will just use your standard round sort of cylindrical shaped nub, um, which I should have one in here. I apologise for the, the messy hands. I've been tinkering my rifles all day. So this is your standard AEG nub is just a round little cylinder, quite squishy, um, and nearly every AEG will come with one of them. And, and they're fine, they, they work, they do the job. Um, obviously things have evolved quite a lot since since Buckings came out and there's a, certainly a, a wider choice now. Um, some of the other Buckings, I'm not sure if I have got one, um, which, I, which you get in the, the actual SRS rifle, is these ones which are 60 degree uh, and they've got a much larger mound in them. Um, only issue with these, and, and anyone who owns an SRS, I think Kicking Mustang, you've got one, and a few of the other Sniper Ops guys have, is the feed lips are quite wide. And what that means is it's very difficult to get a perfect seal with this. So what you generally need to do is the usual PTF tape mod around this end, but also, without covering up this mound, you want to try and put a thin bit of tape around here, and what that'll do is keep a little bit more pressure on these feed lips so that when the nozzle goes in, you'll get a much, much better seal. Um, you can get maple leaf buckings as well for AEGs, and I've got some of these for VSR barrels. Um, essentially the same, but I haven't got any AEG ones just because I haven't got many rifles that use AEG barrels and buckings. But what have I got? I've got... So this, and you can tell because they have these two lines on the top, um, which helps you when you're installing the bucking to know where the window is, and also if you're using something like uh, the I key, like that, it helps you line up to make sure that that's in the, the correct spot, which is good if you put in these in gas blowback pistols like the MK23, Glocks, I cappers, etc. Um, also the same principle for the for the Hadron Designs H-plate. But these buckings, and again I don't know how well it's going to be, but rather than having a standard sort of half crescent nub, these actually have a long concave patch. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do it justice on camera. 
but you should be able to see that there is a longer patch in there rather than just a nub and it's the same sort of design on these ones um, you've got the Autobots now and the Decepticons which I think yep I've got an Autobot here um, which are these are really really good buckings um, they seal quite well the only issue um, and I'll call it out now while I've got it here is these buckings come with this little groove cut out the end where the nozzle goes and you're also provided with one of these rings and the idea is this slips over if I can get it on they are a bit fiddly alright so the idea is once you've got that on there this really really helps with the air seal and it, and it does the issue is in some rifles where the nozzle goes in on the inner piece in, right in there it will start just nipping little chunks off and what can happen is one the seal starts to wear down and you'll notice a lot more FPS variations and also which has happened to me on a, on a few occasions when I first started using these little bits of debris from these lips go in your barrel and they can they can cause jams if you're using really tight barrels like g 5.98s and, and even some 601s um, but they are good uh, and again I don't know whether you can see it in there but they also have that that concave patch which just puts the BB in the same spot every time um, gives it a nice long contact patch and, and gives you a really nice flat uh, flight path as well um, when you're using these buckings, and I, I see this question asked a lot, um, and I, I feel sorry for some of the new people getting into airsoft sniping because people are very, very blunt with their answers. But essentially, if you want to use a uh, an ex a bucking with a long concave patch or an R hop, um, the best results you generally want to go with an unbridged barrel. Now, some people say that you should only use an R hop with a bridged, and it, it makes no difference. Um, bridged or unbridged, you can still R hop them the exact same way. Um, bridged is easier just because you can see if it fits in quite well just by the shape of it when it sets. But unbridged, you actually get to see the inner diameter as and when you put it in, which is good. But to give a comparison, this is a stock bridged barrel. And by bridged, what I mean, or what people mean rather, is it has this little bit here as opposed to a barrel like the maple leaf barrels so this is a 220mm uh, crazy jet barrel you'll notice it doesn't have this bridge here and it is a completely open window and what that allows is when you've got the bucking on the barrel And you've got it all lined up and I'll try and get it in focus again I don't know how well it will work you should be able to see the whole patch in there and that comes through nice and even through the window especially if you're using uh, one of the uh, Omega nubs or one of the skis 3d printed nubs um, while these barrels are good and these buckings are brilliant You'll generally read that most people using gas rifles like the Tanaka, like myself, Kicking Mustang and a lot of the other sniper ops guys do, um, will generally use normal bridged barrels like these. So a standard barrel, uh, whether it's a PDI 605 or 608, um, or an Action Army, uh, or a Lalax, anything with a bridge, we will generally stick to, and it's certainly one of my more favourite buckings nowadays, is the Modified Tan. Now the reason why I like this is it's made out of some unusual aircraft grade material and it works all year round whether you're using green gas or, or CO2. It doesn't freeze, it doesn't deform, it doesn't seem to get affected by outside variables such as temperature and humidity which is great. Um, and because of the material it's made from it, it's really grippy and it gives incredible hop and this works with any barrel. So whether you've got a bridged or unbridged, these just drop on any VSR barrel. Um, 
they've got your traditional, and again I'll try and get it on there, just standard half moon sort of shaped nub, but you pair that with the TDC style hop that you get on Tanakas and KJWs, or hop arms for the VSR10 like the Sniper 1 or the Airsoft Pro. They work really really well, they give a, a near perfect seal every time, um, and for me these have replaced 9 balls. Nine ball buckings for a long, long time were the, the, the gold standard of hot rubbers for the VSR and for gas blowback rifles in general. They just worked very well. But in recent years, the QC has got absolutely appalling. I've probably sent back more buckings than I've had working ones in the last year. Um, and for that reason, I don't use them anymore. It's not worth the hassle. One out of every five recently seems to be usable out of the packaging. Others need modding and others are just throwing the bin jobs. Whereas the modified tans are working really, really well. QC is absolutely on point with them. Um, and for a standard bucking, um, I really recommend them. I think Skirm Shop has just started to stock these. Because um, there isn't a whole lot of places that actually have them in stock. Um, they're about €15, Euros, I think, €16. Euros, but really worth trying them, if you haven't already. Uh, another favourite of mine, albeit it doesn't last as long as I'd like, is the PDI W hold bucking. Um, this works with uh, bridge barrels or unbridged. Um, gives generally gives a, a good seal, not as good as the the nine ball or the modify, but it does work very well. And this has what's called a fanged design. So rather than the the half moon shape or the long concave patch, it's just got two fangs like this. And I'll again try and show you that in the window uh, in the camera. Sorry. So I don't know if you can see that guys, but in there, there's a, essentially a half circle mound with a slit in it. And what that ha means is that when you apply the hop, they split out into two distinct points. And what that helps do, what helps does, sorry, is it centers the BB. So that each time you're putting around through, the BB gets chambered, it sits in, It's in there. Oh, nearly had it there. And it gets put in between those two points, meaning there's very little left left to right deviation, and you get a nice straight BB. Um, and they, they work very, very well. They're not a particularly expensive bucking. I think you can get them for about ten, eleven pounds. Um, they are only fifty duro though. Um, and unfortunately that does mean in a high FPS rifle they, they do tend to wear out pretty quickly. Um, also you need to have um, a flat hop arm. So rather than the, the VSR hop arm, which so rather than this style hop arm, which is your standard VSR 10 rifle, whether that's the Simon CM701, the JG Bar 10, or or a standard VSR, this is what you'll usually get. And what happens if you try and use this with the PDIW hold, the fangs don't split out, they sort of squash together and get a bit deformed. So what you need to do is put a piece of Bic pen, which I haven't actually got to hand, but something similar to this. So cut a Bic pen to the size of your hop arm. And this isn't cut to size, this is literally just a standard AG nub that I've got. Um, but for a demonstration it should should work although it doesn't want to play ball today Let's see if I've got another one yeah right so you can even use an AEG rubber and um, the Action Army hop up nubs actually fit quite well but what you can do is just stick a nub in between the two prongs And then what that allows you to do is to give a f nice, much heavier, you've got a lot more pressure with this. And I think you might be able to see that, but when they come down they split out as they're supposed to. 
Um, while we're on the topic of, of VSR rifles, um, another hop arm that you can get hold of is the Maple Leaf hop arm. This is specifically designed for the stock hop up chamber uh, to be used with the Maple Leaf buckings, whether that's the Decepticon, the Autobot, um, the Diamond, or the Delta. Um, for me, I've had some QC issues with these. Some of them have absolutely been fine, uh, and others, the actual mound here has been off to the left or off to the right, and it, it's given me flyers, and I've had to, had to shim the hop arm down. Um, and if you're using it in a, a Simer, the top of this hop arm is a bit wider, uh, a bit taller, sorry, than a stand, the standard arm that you get. So you actually need to sand it down a bit, so that when you put the chamber in the outer barrel, it isn't already being pushed down because um, it will just give you jam straight away and very very little adjustment. Um, if we're going for an R hop uh, or if, if you are using Maple Leaf um, you can actually just mod existing hop arms so this one um, is just done with Shugu and uh, not Shugu sorry uh, with Suguru just put a blob on there shaped it to a rough square uh, and then just let it cure and then just sanded it down to give me a nice square shape which I can use with maple leaf buckings or, uh, or R hops um, and same thing uh, this one just used a bit of plastic to do the exact same thing just shape it and sand it to the hop window um, and, and that's a cheap DIY mod if you haven't got the cash to go out and buy a sniper one hop arm or one of the maple leaf hop arms um, modding your existing ones nice and easy to do nope. No, Bailey, yours is fine, absolutely fine, uh, which is why I've got it out, actually, as you know, I'll bring it up to you. Um, some other buckings that I've got, which you don't see them over here very often, and they're very hard to find, and it's it's a really soft silicon material, and this actually came installed in my PPS K98, uh, and it seals incredibly well. Um, as good as a modified tan or a nine ball, um, and it's got a very prominent nub in it. And I don't know if you see it. It's, it's rather than the half circle, it's a very distinct, almost squared off patch, a bit like the Reaps bucking, um, but it works really, really well. And sometimes I've seen these sold as SHS, uh, other times they're sold as Rocket and and PPS. Um, but if you ever if you ever see these online, grab a couple. They're, they're just worth having. They work in every gun, every everything that takes a VSR bucking, um, and they just work really really well. I really like the material. Um, I took it out of my K ninety eight um, just because I was trying uh, was trying to try a maple leaf bucking in there, and it, it it didn't give me as good performance. So I'll actually be putting this back in uh, probably this weekend if I get the time. Uh, another good rubber is another modifier, and I think this has actually been sent out with the SSG 24s or the, or the Mod 24s now, um, as opposed to the the black silicon bucking it was originally advertised with. Um, but these 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 themselves are quite good buckings. Um, they seal really well. Uh, they've got these two ridges on the outside, and um, which make them very stiff to get into action army hop chambers. Um, but in a stock VSR 10 chamber, they work really, really well. Um, again, they seal really well. Uh, they've got a nice big, nice big hot mound in them, as you can hopefully see there. Um, and another really good bucking. Uh, Carlos has asked, I see you're explaining very well, but you prefer, don't you prefer R hop or S hop or bucking them up? So. I've done a fair few R hops in my time, uh, and funny enough, someone asked me if I did R hops today, uh, and I've just bought some new um, some new silicon tubing to use. R hops, if you can get them done really well, work very very well. But unless you've got a jig set up where you can cut them perfect for each different type of barrel, they're very very time consuming. Um, they do work well; they're very very durable. But for me. I can put a, a modified tan in my Tanaka at 2.3 joules, put it next to a VSR with an R hop at 2.3 joules, and I'll I'll still hit the same range. Accuracy will still be the same. It isn't. They're very good for low-powered rifles, 
that struggle that would normally struggle to lift heavier ammo. Um, and again, if, if you do them well, they can perform very well. They give you very very flat flight paths. But for me, because of the time they can take, and the fact that people like to inherently tinker with their rifles and and strip stuff apart, um, I generally don't like to install them. Um, I might get around to doing it again if I have a bit more time uh, and if people, if there is an interest in it. But for my standard, which is, I want to hit anything I'm aiming at up to 80 meters, and if I get the chance to do a 90 or 100 meter shot, I'm going to go for it and hope I get it. That's my standard. If I can do that, which I can do with a lot of these buckings and a good setup, then that's what I'm happy with, and that's what I'll give to customers. A gun that can hit 90 meters, and anything up to 90 meters, it'll be hitting every time. And it's just a lot easier to pair a good hop-up arm or a good hop-up nub with an already existing bucking. Um, but that said, uh, I've actually got one of Silent Sniper's R-Hops coming, and we were chatting, and I've just picked up another SRS, um, which is behind me. Um, which I've I've taken it out of the box once. Um, I've got a Gen 1 here uh, that I've had from Longbow BB for some time. Um, they wanted me to do some work on it, see if there's any parts that I can improve upon, any mods. Um, and lucky enough there's a big community and I've had a few things and a few others have. Um, and out of those conversations, Silent Sniper's offered to send me a couple of his R-Hop patches, um, which I'm going to try. Um, and then yeah, maybe I'll, I'll give it a go myself, but for me I just I haven't had the time to do it. Um, but long story short, that R hops are very good if they're done perfectly. But unfortunately, out of every ten R hops that I see being done in the UK by retailers, I'd say one of them is is good and actually worth having done. Um, S hops, same as an R hop. If you do them well. Uh, you take your time, you do them properly, they can work really well, they give you really good results, but again, they're a little bit more difficult to get right, just because of the way that Sugru cures, how you have to knead it and leave it for 24, 48 hours, people tend to rush it, and for that reason, you don't you don't see many people that have done good installs. Um, but the theory is as good as our hop, they, they do work. Um, and But the only issue that I've found, and, and others have found, is that it isn't very durable. They don't last nearly as long as an R hop or a standard bucking does. Um, some other nubs that I've stumbled across, which and because of the colour of them, they're quite they might be difficult to make out on camera. Is these? Now these are made by Skis. Uh, these are on Shapeways, and he does three different ones. I've used all of mine already, so I've only got these ones left. But he does these ones which are essentially 3D printed versions of the Prometheus bridge bucking, uh, bridge nub and these are made to fit perfectly into the Action Army chamber and they really do. I've got two of these concave ones in my VSR and my TAC 300 um, and the tolerances on them are spot on um, and they really, they're long, much much longer than the standard um, Omega nub so this is a Maple Leaf Omega nub and that's what you'd usually use with your maple leaf bucking. Um, but these are, are they're good, but being rubber, the specs can be off, and they're quite short, which seems a bit pointless to me because the con concave patch on the maple leaf buckings is a lot longer than this nub, so you're only using about 60% of the patch. Whereas skis nubs are nearly double in length of the omega nub. Which means you get to use the full potential of the con of the the patch, uh, and I've had noticeable increases in how straight the flight path is on a longer concave patch than the shorter Omega nub, um, and I'm, I might start stocking them. Uh, I need to speak to Ski and, and see if he's happy for me to do so. Um, but they're a really great drop-in part for the Action Army chamber. And for most, that's pretty much the majority of buckings. Most of the other ones I've got are your standard. TM buckings, which just have your, your half moon mound. Um, yeah, that's it for the, for the main set of buckings. Um, other nubs that you see, and these are mainly, you can use these in the Action Army Chamber, but you usually see these nubs in the uh, in AEGs. And this is uh, a H space nub, or an SCS nub. Um, you might recognise this. This was the original sort of 
improved upon AEG nubs. And the idea was that because of the shape of it, literally looking like a H, it gave a really nice, consistent uh, placement of the BB, as well as a sort of, it forged the bucking around the shape of the BB, and it works really well. And this has been built upon by a few people. Now, if you look at the FOW nub, it's essentially a much larger version of this with some changes to the, to the radius, and it works phenomenally well. I've got one in the SRS that I'm building for Longbow, um, and they're, they're great. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I've got. Um, that's pretty much the main bulk of what I wanted to talk about today, was just some simple discussions around buckings and barrels. And um, One thing I did want to mention, actually, and someone asked me the other day, and I've used a few recently, is in the L96 rifle, uh, like the the MBO1s, the wells, um, a lot of people have asked what barrels to use. And I personally have started to use... ZCI barrels for any guns that use an AEG barrel and the customer wants a, a budget barrel that's that's really good is the ZCI's they're bridged but they've got a really wide hop window which is great um, if you want if you do want an R hop or S hop um, they're very consistent the 602 stainless steel um, the crowning on them's pretty good for a barrel of this price um, AK to M4 sell these um, and they are really cheap, much, much better than the Mad Bull barrels. Um, I really don't recommend the Mad Bull barrels. The coating comes off, they're very inconsistent, uh, and they cost more than the ZCI. Um, so I really do recommend these if you're running AEGs or snipers that use AEG, rifle, uh, AEG barrels, then the ZCIs are, are great. Um, otherwise, other really good barrels to use in your sniper rifles. And I've got one here that I'm installing in my one of my short build VSRs, is the Maple Leaf Crazy Jet Barrels. Now, loads of us have started to use these. Um, they work incredibly well. They're unbridged, so they work straight away with the Maple Leaf buckings. Um, usually, I'd, I'd say pair this with a 60 degree Autobot bucking. They're 604 diameter, so they're not too tight, not too wide. Um, there's a load of theories around, is a 6.05 better than a 6.01? Weather's wider, better, etc. And the, 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 as much as there is theories around it, you can only really look at what you see when you're building a rifle. And for me personally, I've got an Edgy 601 barrel in my TAC 300, and I've got a Crazy Jet in my standard VSR. And the only real difference is the flight paths. The range on the Crazy Jet is a little bit more, I'd say, but then again, there's, there's other things in the rifle making those, those improvements to range. But these aren't, aren't particularly expensive, they're much, much cheaper than PDI and Edgy. Um, they work very well. They've got this, uh, essentially what's porting uh, at the front. So the air comes down, and then at this last section, and these, these oddly enough, these barrels uh, can cause dual creep because of the way the BB decelerates in this last little piece, allowing the air to build up behind it. Because the air gets to here, and then it's forced out the front as per usual, but then it's also forced into these little vents around the outside of this ring and pushed forward and out. And what that allows is the BB to leave the barrel in a much, much straighter, much more consistent manner, manner without clipping the ends or without an uneven placement of air on either side affecting the hop. And for that reason, these work really, really well. Um, and I've started to, to recommend these to people. Um, Skirm Shop sell them, Bespoke Airsoft sell them. Um, they're not too expensive and they work, they work really really well um, yep Smithy's got one, Hutchie's got one, I've got one, Kiki Mustang's got one um, I've just installed a few this week and some people's MK23's um, really really good barrels uh, alongside obviously you've got your Lalax barrels as well which I've got somewhere so Lalax are another another good brand um, they do unbridged barrels as well, which are good for maple leaf buckings, uh, and they're in 603 diameter and stainless steel. Um, this is for my Tokyo Marui M40A5. Um, haven't had a chance to swap out the barrel yet, um, so I've had this sent to me, and I'm going to hopefully get around to doing it at some point. Uh, 
let's see. So, and that's that's the main bit, really. I suppose now we'll move on to some some questions and a and a, a general chat, uh, rather than just looking at my hands for the next half hour or so. So let's have a look at this. So what have we got? Oh, lots of comments. Talking amongst yourselves. So Carlos is asking, because I'm an SVD user and I'm still wondering which could be better with 1.3 joules, 1.3 joule at a point two. I would say the modified buckings work really well. Um, if you're an SVD user, depending on what SVD you're using, I know the uh, the Ares I believe takes VSR buckings and barrels, but if you're using something like the King Arms, uh, the Real Sword, or the ANK. Um, I'd actually say the 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 silverback airsoft. Um, I, don't, I think Longbow might have these in stock. Um, if not, you can get them from Silverback. Um, but they're sixty degree. They work really well. They've got an enlarged nub, so uh, enlarged mound. Sorry, so you can use like a an FOW nub, which I, I think they're coming out for the AEG soon. Um, and yeah, they work well. Or or even just these sixty euros uh, silicon buckins. I've had good results with. Let's have a. Carter's saying he's using a 603 stainless steel mad ball. Yeah, or if you can get a stainless steel um, as opposed to the, the coated mad ball barrels, definitely go for it. Um, they are much better. But again, I would. I think ZCI is soon to release, and I know they are because I've got the prototype here. ZCI will actually be releasing VSR cut versions of their barrels, um, and they're going to be quite cheap uh, and very. They're 602. So they're they're quite tight, but they they work really well. Um, from the test that I've done with that one anyway. Uh, Skirm Shop are great. Yes, yes they are. Um, really good company, run by two brothers. Um, really nice guys. Great customer service. Uh, huge huge stock of really good products, um, and pretty quick delivery. I've had stuff delivered from them quicker than I have stuff from companies here in the UK. Uh, Paul Smith says, I've got my two crazy jet barrels from Skirm Shop. You have, and in fact, I've got your 550 length here. So, yep, you'll be glad to know, Paul, that I have that all ready to come up to you and go in your, t your M48.5 or Tanaka when you get it. What did you think of the o-ring on the end of the bucking to help seal? I have tried it, but for me, it just didn't work. The bucking didn't fit in the chamber properly. Uh, it was really inconsistent. I don't know whether that was because of the o-rings. Um, but for me personally, it, I found PTFE tape, PTFE tape was enough. Um, you just have to be very careful not to actually get any in front of the feed lips. Uh, David Gray is asking, for all round life and durability, what setup would you suggest in an Action Army hop-up and an Action Army barrel? I would suggest uh, a modified tan bucking, so one of these, with, I would say, uh, probably a bridge nub would work because of the shape of it, so one of these nubs. Trying to get it on camera. They're, because they're a frosted material, it's really tough to get the sharp against skin tone. But one of these uh, would work quite well. And I'll tell you what, I've got one of these spares. So if you send me a PM, cover postage, I'll pop one of these in for you. Um, these are dropped straight into your AA chamber. Um, and I've got, I've got a couple of them, so I, don't, I haven't used them. So if you want one, it's fine. Um, but yeah, just ping me a PM afterwards and, and we'll sort that out. Uh, what else? James Moore says, do you need lots and lots of piece of TFE tape to get a good seal on the far stop on the SRS? As I can hear escaping when as I can hear air escaping when I plug the barrel with my thumb, uh, and I've added PTFE. Now I'll be trying the SSR hop. Um, oh, I had one earlier. I was I was sent I was talking to Jason at Longbow about air seal, and I sent him some pictures. But essentially. I'll test it on this barrel for now. The only thing with the silicon bucket is it is very, very tight. 
So say this is your SRS barrel. You want a PTFE tape this end like normal. Two to three wraps is fine. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then this end, you want to be careful not to put any PTFE tape over, do that against my black top if it helps, over this nub. Because if you put PTFE tape on there, it forces the bucking into the, the mound into the barrel, which you don't want. So what you have to do, and the easy way I found of doing this, and I'll try and do it for you. Um, if I get some PTFE tape. Now, I'll try not to uh, to cock this up while I'm doing it, but essentially, what I found was line it up so that the PTFE tape is just on the metal bridge of the barrel, and then try and keep it as straight as you can, and just go around, I'd say twice, and then put it off, and then what will happen depending on how you pull it or if you cut it, you'll end up with a, just one layer going across. And just put something in there, uh, like an Allen key or, or something ideally softer actually. And you basically just wanna just peel out the bits that have gone into the feed lips. so that it looks like that and if you do that there and on this end it should keep a lot more even pressure on the feed lips uh, and that will help you get a, a much better seal um, I had this one apart today so I'm not sure how well the seal was doing that Now here you go. So this is the Gen 1 SRS that I've had from Longbow that I've been working on. Uh, this is running my uh, prototype air brake piston in here. Let's see if you can see it. So there you go. So that is perfect. I'm, did you, I'm hoping you guys managed to see that. You should be able to see that. Can you guys see the piston there? A quick yes or no from someone. Yes, no. So you can get a perfect. So this is using the fast hop chamber as well. Um, so it just takes a bit of time and patience. You might have to do it once or twice. Um, to get it right, but you can do it whether you're using uh, that bucking um, or the Madball red buckings work quite well, the uh, accelerator buckings. Um, but that's in the, in the Gen 2, the, the, uh, the Gen 1, but it's exactly the same in the Gen 2. What rubber am I using? Uh, In this one, I'm using the standard 60 degree silverback rubber. The standard rubber, so the standard silicon rubber that comes with it. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, the standard rubber is great with the FOW nub, um, which I'm running. Um, works absolutely brilliantly. Um, the maple leaf buckings uh, are very hit and miss. With the FOW nub, they can work really well, but getting the air seal on them, just because they've got much, much wider feed lips, is, is a lot harder. Um, whereas the silicon bucking is quite flexible and forgiving, um, so you can get a very good seal with it. It just needs a bit of PCFE tape there, and and obviously on the the other end, So that's how it should look. PTFE on the muzzle end and PTFE 
just after where the window ends and the bridge starts. Yeah, the maple leaves are, are a pain, um, but the FOW nub gives very good results, very nice flat path. Um, mine, I haven't got any upgraded springs for mine, long bar out of stock, but in the uh, the Gem 1 that I've been working on, which has got a 602 stainless steel inner, uh, ZCI, the standard bucking PTFE tape mods, um, FOW nub, fast top chamber, and the air brake piston that I've been working on, um, that is about, I can't remember what it was now, 1.4 joules on a 0.2, but 1.8 joules on a 4.5. Um, so the, air, the, the covert, which I've got, creeps quite a lot, but with the air brake piston uh, and a tighter barrel, it, it creeps even more, so I could probably have it using just a, an M150 spring uh, and still getting close to 2, 2.5 joules. Uh, is it better to use skis concave or H block nub with the Autobot bucking? Skis concave. If you've got, if you're using the Action Army chamber and an Autobot bucking, the skis concave nub is is absolutely brilliant. Really, really good. Um, I think they're sixteen quid, and you get a couple in there, so they're they're definitely worth it. And um, for me personally, much better than the Omega nub as well. So that was the main bulk of the the content. So. Um, I'll, I'll generally try and keep these these lives to an hour, so we've got 15 minutes. So any any questions? Um, something that I've been working on actually is um, I recently got made redundant from work, and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to really do sniper mechanics full time, rather than just in the evenings and weekends. I'm I'm going to try and make something of it, and so I've turned my little my spare room at home into a little little office slash work area. Uh, Got a guitar rack for my rifles. Got it all nice and tidy. Been sorting out all my tools and spares. Um, so you're welcome to have a have a look at that if you like. And uh, I did get a new new rifle. I got a Barrett 50 cal. Uh, Mark, what do you think of the modified black bucking for the SRS? Uh, if you're on about the flat hop one, I haven't tested one in SRS. But when I used to use them in my TM recoils, the they've got a special name, haven't they? The modified baton or something platoon. Um, but they work really, really well. Um, the material's really good. And um, modified rubbers in general just they work really, really well. Whether it's the light grey one that you get in the GHK fives or used to get in the GHK fives, um, or whether it is like the greens or the tans, that they they all work really, really well. Um, I have got a load of AEG rubbers on order to test in the SRS to see what combos work and, and I've got a PDI 605 coming as well. Um, but the flat hops work really great. Um, you've got a SRS, how, how are you getting on with it? What parts have you stuck in yours, Mark? Um, so did, did you guys want to uh, have a quick little tour of my, my spare room and some of the rifles I've got going on? I appreciate there is a, a bit of delay between me talking and, and you being able to uh, to answer. So we'll, we'll take you for a wonder. So you come into the room. It's a little bit messy still. I've got my lighting set up up there. Got some spare mags that I was repairing earlier all of my tools and then I've got the bench where I can do all of the work which is where I've been talking to you guys and then got uh, my rifle rack which has got a mix of mine and some customers rifles on there at the moment got the Tokyo Marui M40A5 Gen 1 SRS Tanaka M700 in an Action Army Woodstock. Uh, this is the one I've been working on that some people have been asking about. This is an Action Army AAC-1 rifle in a real steel Remington stock. Um, which I think looks quite nice. Um, unfortunately I did, it was second hand and, and it had some damage when I got it. And uh, me modding it certainly didn't help that. Um, 
but it's a, it's not a bad rifle for the price. Got the uh, TAC 300, which is VSR based. My personal VSR, the K98 I showed in the last video. And Sneaky Blinders Tanaka, which I finished this week. Um, which now the paint's all dried. And this is a Preban M24, uh, which has got a ported Edgy 601 barrel, a Spartan hot chamber with one of my 3D printed V nubs uh, running a. I think I've put a modified tan in there uh, with a PCS bolt GNG uh, rubber set. And a couple of uh, little AGs. Got an AK shotgun and a Famas, and then this bad boy. And it's so bloody big, I'll have to take a step back. Is the Barrett 50 Cal. This is made by Galaxy, so I wasn't expecting anything brilliant out of it, but I'm quite surprised, pleasantly surprised by the fact that it looks like it uses some SVD internals such as the sears, the piston, the cylinder and the hop up is a TDC style which is done by a grub screw and it takes AEG barrels and buckings which for £130 isn't too bad uh, and the rifle is actually polymer uh, except the outer barrel which is full metal so despite being 1.4 meters, 1.5 meters long. Uh, it's it's actually not that heavy. I've right, had some more comments come in. Kenny says, "Is that mine?" Yep. In case you missed it, Kenny, this is your Tanaka preban. which was loaded. Check the bloody chamber on that as well. Uh, Carlos says, in my M4, I have a modified 407, comes with a sit back in. Yep, there's, there's, as I said, the modified buckings are, are brilliant. Uh, Lisa's a massive looking bit of kit, it certainly is. Probably put a hole in your wall. Nah, it's, nah, nah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's, you cover that up, it's fine. Um, so we're nearly on the hour. Uh, unless there's any more questions from anyone, I will call it a night. Uh, next week, uh, well, I'll, put, I'll put this video up on YouTube for the people that don't, haven't managed to catch it live. Um, and then I've got a quick painting video, 5 minute how to paint video, um, which I did on Instagram. And you're on a fizzer. I'm not sure what that means. Um, can you do more concealment tutorials? I could, but you'd be learning from someone who's learning from someone who's already learnt. Um, so if you're interested in the concealment stuff, things like the ghillies, the leaf suits, rifle camo, all of that, uh, and, and the whole aspect of, of airsoft sniping really, uh, check out uh, Kiki Mustang uh, and, and Sniper Ops in general. Um, the leaf suits that I've built and which I haven't got the tanned um, are all done working with and, and speaking to Kiki Mustang um, and getting some help from him, watching his videos, studying his pictures, speaking to some of the other Sniper Ops guys. Um, just watch his content, speak to him. He's a nice guy. If, uh, he's in the middle of moving at the moment, but uh, I know if he's got time, it'll, it'll certainly help everyone. Um, and yeah, like his, his content is really good. Um, I went from using the old Gilly Cape, uh, which which had some leaf suit elements in it in terms of using fake foliage, um, but I've since moved over to an actual Jack Pike leaf suit, uh, which is just 10 times better. Um, and yeah, and I have to say, as much as you can put your own spin in it, it really started with kicking Mustang's videos. Uh, good stream, dude, still waiting for the cylinder. Well, with the cylinder and smooth bolt pull, if when my YouTube gets to a nice big milestone, I will do a video showing, I'll do two videos. One showing how to do smooth bolt pull on a 45 setup, uh, and one showing how to do it on a 90 degree setup. Um, 
but that'll be something I'll do once once YouTube's got a bit more of a following and, and I know the videos are actually gonna uh, gonna be watched. Um, I'll do it on there. But for now, um, I'll keep doing these Tech Tuesdays. Um, I'll keep doing the blog posts as well in between. Uh, and, and Instagram, Instagram's something I'm, I'm using a lot more at the moment. Um, I'm really liking the, the, the live stories feature. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great little platform, really good community on there. So if you haven't got me on Instagram, check out uh, Sniper Mechanics on there. Um, always got some good content on there. Uh, some more poncy pictures of my gear and, and sometimes stuff I'm working on for customers. Um, uh, everybody like the YouTube channel? Yes, shameless plug. Everyone go and like the YouTube channel. There's 18 of you on here. I hope all 18 of you are subscribed. Um, but with that note, uh, thanks again for joining, guys. Um, hope it's been useful. As always, you can always ping me a question on my personal page or, or through Sniper Mechanics, and I'll always help if I can. Um, but otherwise, have a good night. Um, I'll try and put this video up tomorrow. Um, and I think the next one I do might be the, the SRS Gen 2 review, um, seeing as there's a lot of interest in them at the moment, and I've, I've, I haven't even done anything with mine. It's still sat in the box behind me from Longbow. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.